Hello, international. Nice to see you. Most of Western music is made in triads. Triads are everywhere. Everybody talks about triads. Learn your arpeggios, learn your triads, learn your chords. You hear this stuff all the time. The question is, why triads? Why triads are so important? Because they sound good, will scream somebody from the back. Okay, thank you. So the, why they sound good? What's happening there? Okay. Some other people are gonna, is gonna say, yeah, you know, that's how we build chords. We take a note, then we take every other note in the scale, or we go up by thirds in the scale, whatever, and then we pick the first three notes. That's great, fantastic, but it still doesn't tell me why. Why triads? Besides, why we pick three notes? Of course, we can pick four notes, five notes, etc. but triads are more common in all kinds of music than uh, seventh chords. Seventh chords are really common, but still, triads are more important in some way. Also, while we're going up in thirds, we can go up in fourths, in fifths, etc. And yeah, and sometimes we do, but the, still, the most natural choice, the one that sounds best to most people, the one most used, it's still going up in thirds. So why triads are so important? What makes triad sound good to our ears? Turns out, there is a very precise answer to that. So here's the thing. I need to explain to you guys one little thing that you know made already, by the way. So stay with me for a minute and then I'll tell you why triads have been picked this way. Why triad exists and why they sound so good to us. Okay. If I play one note by itself in music, that note has no problem. I mean, it just exists. It's just... You can't even tell what note it is unless you have perfect pitch. It's a G, by the way. Okay, if I play two notes, those two notes form what we call a dyad, or in some cases we call it an interval, meaning that the distance between those two notes tells you something and is telling you, is giving you a specific feeling. And the feeling depends, again, only on the distance between those two notes. Some of those feelings are nice, for lack of a better word. Some of those feelings are less nice, or even downright nasty. Okay, so we decided to divide the intervals in two categories, consonant intervals and dissonant intervals. The categorization is, I'm not saying it's arbitrary, but most people do actually feel this way, that there are some intervals that are nice and are consonant, and others that are not so nice and they are uh, dissonant. And by the way, I don't mean good or bad. Dissonant intervals are great to create drama. They're just not stable. So, consonant intervals also divide in two subcategories. We don't care about those two, but just to be precise, one is perfectly consonant and one is imperfectly consonant. Perfectly consonant intervals are unison, perfect fifth, perfect fourth, and the octave. Imperfectly consonant are major and minor thirds, major and minor sixth. Dissonant intervals are sevenths, major and minor, major and minor seconds, and all augmented or diminished interval. And there are some situations where the perfect fourth can be considered dissonant, but right now we really don't care about that. So I can choose two notes so that they are consonant, or I can choose two notes so that they are dissonant. I can also choose three notes, and if I have three notes, now I have three relationships to care about. The relationship between note one and note two, the one between note two and note three, and the one between note one and note three. Can I choose those three notes so that they are all dissonant? Oh yeah, definitely I can. For instance, I can pick C, C sharp, and D. That's quite hard to play on the guitar on the same octave, but I can make an effort and play them on different octaves and sound this way. Lovely. Can I pick those three notes so that some of those relationships are consonant and some are dissonant? Yes, that's actually what's happening in the majority of the cases. Can I pick those three notes in a way that all those relationships are consonant? Yes. And what turns out is that those groups of three notes in which all the relationships are consonant are major and minor triads. And only the major and the minor triads. No other combination of note has all those three relationships that turn out to be consonant. So first of all, let's see what happens with a triad. So I have a C major triad, C, E, G. Well, between C and E, it's a major third. It's here in the consonant bin. 
between E and G I have a minor third, still in the consonant bin, and between C and G I have a perfect fifth. Great, still in the consonant bin. So, for major it works perfectly, what about minor? Let me, let me take A minor, A minor it's A, C, E, between A and C, a minor third, consonant, between C and E, a major third, consonant, between A and E, perfect fifth, consonant, yay! And if I turn those notes around, uh, and so I do all the inversion of the chords, still all the relationships are consonant. Fun! Fantastic. That's why triads are important, because they are the only possible groups of three notes that are pairwise consonant, meaning that all the three relationships between the notes turn out to be consonant. The mathematical demonstration of this fact would be actually pretty easy to give, but honestly, are you guys here to see a mathematical demonstration? I mean, if I want to empty the room, I can give you the mathematical demonstration or I can start singing. The speed of escape from the room is pretty much comparable. So, let's not do either of those things. Let's instead ask the next question. Can I choose four notes so that all those notes are mutually consonant? So if I have four notes, now I have a lot more relationship. I have one, two, three, four, five, six relationship between four notes. Turns out it is not possible to pick four notes so that all those relationships are consonant. There is always at least one dissonant relationship. If you don't believe me, try. I'll see you guys <laughs> in a couple of weeks. But... What you can do, though, is you can try to pick the least possible amount of dissonances. So you try to pick uh, notes that are as consonant as possible. So what turns out is that, hey, guess what? The seventh chords turn out, and their inversions, turn out to be that. Turn out to be the groups of four notes that have the least possible amount of dissonance. And there we have some seventh chord that have only one dissonant relationship, like, I don't know, A minor 7, so a minor 7th chord. The A minor 7th will have an A, a C, an E, and a G. And on the guitar, I have to play them in a different order. And as you can see, the A and the G are dissonant because there is an interval of a 7th, but all the other pairs are consonant. In some other situation, I have the chords that have more than one dissonant relationship. So, for instance, if I take a G seventh chord, it contains the note G, B, D, and F. Now, G and F are dissonant, but also B and F are dissonant because they are a triton away. So, a uh, diminished fifth. Okay. So, there's more than one dissonant relationship. So, with one or two dissonant relationships, you obtain the standard seventh chords that you already know. Interesting, eh? The chords, meaning the group of notes that we use the most, are the ones that minimize the dissonance. Either they eliminate it in the major or minor triads, or they have only one or two dissonant relationships. And the dominant chord is, in general, at least in classical theory, used to create movement. There is more dissonance, and now we need to move and resolve those dissonances. Now, again, remember that dissonance is not forbidden, okay? People will tell you dissonance is forbidden. Don't listen to them. Dissonance is drama. It's not bad. It's drama, and you need some drama in your music. You can use as much dissonance as you want. It's just that when we start studying harmony, we start from the consonant stuff because it's easier to use. Because when you play two triads one after the other, they pretty much always sound good, okay? Especially if you respect a couple of tips here and there so that the transition between them is nice. So, that's great. That's where we start. But you can go as dissonant as you want. You can play cluster of notes where you have horrible dissonances all together, and it still will work if that's what you want to express in your music. And if you want to know more on how to use dissonances and how to move from the simple stuff to the complex stuff, then I recommend you guys have a look at my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up. We do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. 
all the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment, I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zillio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!